say hello, Murphy. No, you're not going to say anything. <laughs> you're just going to stare at me. I know, I know. Mmm. Yes, mind the grease. This is the project for today. We've got um, a rear main bearing to replace and two front bearings. So there's one in there and there's another one in that box there. So um, this will probably keep me very busy today, but uh, hopefully it, uh, it shouldn't take too long and I shouldn't run into too many problems. So follow me along and uh, let's see how I get on. So, when the wheel's off, you've got to remove the brake calipers and the, uh, the harness that holds the, the calipers, the actual brake drum itself, the handbrake cable, and then the whole knuckle has to come off. So this bolt and we've got this one here, and you can see it, this one here all the way through and this bar here so that nut, that nut has to come off so the whole the whole assembly then comes off you then have to get it in the press and push the bearing out give it a good clean put the new bearing in and then reverse the operation at least that's that's what the book says so it uh, it looks having taken the calipers off <clears throat> it looks like they've been overheating there's a really strong smell, that that clutch burning smell. And uh, it looks, can you see the way the, there looks to be some sort of heat damage to it. So I'm gonna have to check the, check the alignment, make sure that was all set up correctly. And it looks like it may be, uh, may be rubbing or slightly engaged, but uh, it's, it, the, the straight, the, the smell is, uh, yeah, it's quite pungent. So there's definitely something been going on there. Sensors off, handbrake cables out, handbrake shoes, they're all off. Uh, what else? The calipers are off. So it's a case now of, oh, let's just get rid of that. It's a case now of loosening the, the nut on the wheel hub and then loose, uh, removing the bolts that are holding the, the whole knuckle on. And then we can remove the knuckle and press the bearing out. Okay, so one thing that you must remember to do, especially when taking this bolt out as well, is there's a there's a cam here. So if you if you look at the end of the bolt, it can actually be rotated, and that's to adjust the angle that the wheel goes at. And what it, what you're actually doing is turning this cam shaped washer. So it's a slightly eccentric washer, and that basically al allows the the top of this. Where, where it attach where the knuckle attaches it allows it to be adjusted slightly so what i'm going to do is just going to put a mark on the actual the eccentric washer and the the casing <clears throat> and then when i come to assemble all i need to do then is line up the two lines and i know that the wheel is back to where it was hopefully that makes sense so there you go hopefully you can make out that little marking there so when i come to assemble it if i line those two dots up the wheel will be in the right position Okay, so there's the uh, there's the knuckle off. A little bit of cleaning needed there. There's a tiny bit of corrosion, but nothing major. So I'll clean that up before it goes back. But uh, here we go. There's the knuckle, and in there is the bearing that needs pressing out. So what I need to do now is <clears throat> I need to take the press the hub off and uh, then I can press the bearing out so there we go wish me luck okay so it's a bit of a <clears throat> bit of a tricky setup but I've got it on the press so I'm pressing on the center where the where the wheel hub comes through just there where the bearing is so I'm pressing on the center of that and I've got it chopped up so there's a little block up there and on the other side I'm resting on the plate that there's no real major 
points, but this point here goes through onto the onto the back here where the knuckle is. So that should be the best the best point to uh, to press on. So I'm just going to go slow and uh, see if it uh, see if it breaks free. Are you helping out there, Murphy? Hey, Are you helping out? Okay, so the first bit, so first bit's done. So I've got it pushed, probably about I don't know half an inch, three quarters of an inch through. So I've just had to rearrange because the gap here it was bottoming out on the uh, on the plate. So I just lifted it up by another well, just over an inch or so. <clears throat> that should hopefully give me enough room to press it most of the way through, and then I can just push push it out manually. The rest. Okay, so there's the. Uh, there's the wheel hub off, it weighs a bit. However, I'm just looking at the actual, we've got the bearing there, we've got the runners. And uh, the grease feels, well, it feels like there's almost no grease left. There's a fair amount of play, but what I'm doing is I'm looking at the, the bearing surface in here as well. And it looks... I don't know how close I can get, but it looks to me that that has had, it's been heated, it's got, <clears throat> it's changed colour slightly, it's not, it's not the standard kind of uh, machined steel blue, it's got a, a yellow colour to it, which makes me think that there's a, been a fair amount of heat gone into this. It doesn't feel particularly particularly rough but there is absolutely no grease in there at all and what I can feel is very sticky so I think I think replacing this bearing is definitely uh, something that should be done okay the other interesting point to note is uh, I've just given it a bit of a clean up around the uh, around the edge here and there should be a big um, locking uh, washer uh, one of these that should be in there however this is the one from the kit for the new bearing so it would appear that at some point in its history the bearing maybe have been may have been replaced and uh, whoever it did it forgot to put this back so I don't think the bearings actually moved from its position it's 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 lined up with where the uh, where that should retain it it's not it's not slid out at all but um it's still interesting so <clears throat> oh well at least when it goes back together it will go back together correctly which is better than uh, than it currently is okay so <clears throat> this bit is always a pain the other half of the bearing that's attached to the the hub it's very difficult to get purchase on there's very little there's, there's relative there's no lip at all between the actual bearing and the hub so what i've had to do is i'd had to take the 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 studs out for the wheel and then i had to turn on the lathe the bearing surface down so it was flat to get the bearing puller to grip on the there's a sort of a, a divide that stops the bearings moving further, moving too too far away. Um, so what I've got is the bearing puller up against the edge of that. But as I say, I had to get it in the lathe just to turn down because it's at a slight angle, because the bearings are at an angle. Um, there wasn't enough room for it to actually grip. So what I've had to do is flatten that down. Um, I'll show you once I've once I've pulled it once I've pulled this off. Um, but yeah, a right pain. And uh, if anyone knows the correct way of removing this half of the bearing, um, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so there's the, uh, there's the other half of the bearing off. You can see, hopefully, where I've had to turn down, turn down the edge to give, my, give myself a, a grip there. <clears throat> That's the only point that I could actually grab on this, this ring here. There's no way when when this is in position like that, there is nothing to grip on. When that's pressed down and it sits right the way at the bottom there, let's get the angle so you can get the angle. It sits right at the edge and where this lip is here lines up perfectly 
with the edge of the bearing so there's no way of getting any purchase on it so yeah as I say if anyone knows the uh, the correct process for getting that off please let me know because hopefully I, I, I won't have to do it again for a while but it, um, it's the right pain I know that much so next thing to do is to give this a good clean um, just make sure everything's okay the, the actual bearing surface there even though it's I know it's not a bearing surface but it's a machine surface isn't it for the bearing and um, that's absolutely you know there's, it feels absolutely fine but I'll give it, give it a clean anyway the um, the other half of the bearing now smelling this is going to sound a bit silly but some people will, will know what I mean but when you actually smell this it smells of burnt metal I tried describing that smell to somebody at work the other day and um, they didn't, I don't think they understood what I meant, but there must be other people out there that know what I mean when I say the smell of burnt metal. Um, and it does, it does smell of burnt metal. Um, so I think I was correct. It also, it does make a bit of a rattle. Now, I know that the bearing isn't under load, so maybe that's the reason why they're rattling. But if I compare it with the, um, the new one, that doesn't rattle. So I'm guessing that either the bearings are worn down or the grease has uh, boiled away because if you look inside there, there is still some grease there, but it's black and it's very sticky. Um, so I, I think this bearing was was shot. So I think it's, it was definitely due, due a replacement. What's the matter, Murphy? Are you trying to tell me something? What's the matter? You, you can't have wire wool. You can't eat wire wool. No, I'm sorry. I'll draw the line at wire wool. Okay, so there we go. There's the, there's the hub pressed back in. Turns nice and smooth, which is good. It doesn't make any noise like the other bearing, which uh, is uh, always good news. Right, so now it's a case of just giving it a bit of a clean up and uh, putting it back on. Okay, <clears throat> welcome back. So it's been a week since the first half of the video. Uh, the thing that cropped up uh, was when I was doing the um, the bearing at the back, the, the rear calipers. Um, if you remember, I was talking about um, excessive heat. Uh, now, I thought that it was partially to do with the bearings, which I think it was anyway. But the uh, the two brake shoes off the near side near side wheel where I did the bearing um, if you can see the actual surface of the of the brake pads has started to break down so how close I can get there now that the, these these pads are relatively new as you can see there's not much wear on them however that heat damage was um, caused by the the rear, the caliper it had it would appear to have seized and when I took it off it was in the closed position but because it had sort of seized and locked up with the pads stuck to the the, the brake disc that's where the excessive heat came from and by the time I'd come to take them off it they'd obviously worn down and cooled down enough that I could take the caliper off uh, without too much problem so um, as well as the bearing, I've also now got to put a new caliper on. So I ordered a pair because if one's gone on one side, chances are the one on the other side is in a similar condition. So we've got one for the left and one for the right. So the job <clears throat> today is finish the front bearing, <coughs> which you'll see in just a moment. And then finally, go back to the rear of the vehicle and replace the two brake calipers and then bleed it. So, follow me along and then we'll see how we do. Uh, 
Okay, so the procedure for the front bearing is, I would say, slightly easier than the, <coughs> excuse me, slightly easier than the, the rear bearing. So, remove the, the caliper, take the heat sensor off. That then allows us to take the brake disc off. That comes off. Then remove the main nut from the hub. And then that allows us to then remove the existing uh, hub that then come off there's four bolts We've got four bolts on the on the rear give it a good clean and then do the reverse so then put the hub back on put the new hub back on put the uh, brake disc on then put the calipers on and away we go so um <coughs> follow me along and let's see how we do <coughs> okay so the calipers are off i forgot to mention the uh, the speed sensor that has to come out as well that comes from that little hole just in there so now I can take the uh, take the bolt out there take the brake disc off and then I can I've got access to the hub okay so there's the four bolts that hold the hub they're a bit of a pain to get off but uh, not too bad. There, um, it's mainly the ones at the bottom because the uh, the bolts at the top have more of the uh, metal to go through, so they only just protrude. Whereas the ones at the bottom, they stick out. You can see where the corrosion. So it's basically they stick out by about that much. So basically, I had to try and clean off the thread as much as possible, but then they they do start to foul up slightly when you're taking them out. So before I put them back, I'll give these bolts a good old clean. The main nuts off here, so I should now be able to pull the hub straight off and uh, give it a clean, and then put the new one on. Okay, so there's the hub off. I'm giving it a clean. <coughs> Got rid of the uh, it's just surface rust more than anything and just cleaned up the there's a fairly tight fit between the hub and the uh, around the edge here let's get rid of that nook so this surface here that surface there obviously it marries up with this one here but it's, it's quite a tight fit so i'm just making sure that there's no nothing in there no rust or anything that might uh, stop it from going in so it should now be a case of offering up the offering up the new hub putting the bolts back in I've just gone through and cleaned the all of the rust off the end of these bolts so they're okay so yeah bolt it back on okay there's the uh, there's the new wheel hub on <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So the only thing I need to do now is tighten the, the uh, tighten the nut up. I have to get the torque wrench out for that. I think it's something like 250 pounds. And then there's a slight there's a slight notch there where you knock the edge of the nut in to stop it winding back out. So I'll do that in a minute. And what I've done to prevent any corrosion, I've sprayed some wax oil on the uh, on the back of the hub and over the nuts as well oh the uh, over the bolts where the threads are so if i ever need to take them off again it should be a lot easier so tighten that nut put the uh or give give the disc brake a bit of a clean put that back on and the calipers and that should be it okay there we go so wheels back on everything's back to the way it should be what i need to do now is get the vehicle out reverse it back in so i can then uh, replace the two rear brake calipers and then fingers crossed everything will be done okay so <clears throat> i'm at the uh, the rear of the vehicle now and there's the there's the culprit at the moment that's uh, <coughs> causing all the problems. So basically what's happened is the the piston uh, has seized up and it will not move. So I've, I've tried <clears throat> uh, 
compressed air, comp you know, everything. It just, it's completely seized up, hence. Hence the reason why I'm going to put a new, a new one in. So, um, and like I said before, there's no point just doing the one. So I'm going to do both, um, just to be sure. So <clears throat> I'm going to leave everything in place. Get this one mounted up, get the brake line back in. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, <clears throat> get it bled. It shouldn't be, fingers crossed, it shouldn't be too complicated a job. Okay, sorry, I didn't catch much footage of fitting these calipers, but <coughs> there's the uh, that's the second one fitted. So all I need to do now is bleed the brakes and um, <coughs> get the wheels back on. And touch wood, we should be good. Right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully there'll be more videos to follow.